Weird, unwanted. Those are the only words to describe San Francisco. Players don't want to go there, and it's that simple. Whether it's not wanting to play with the Giants, or it's not wanting to live in the city. Players have expressed concerns about their own family safety in San Francisco. It's gotten to a point where the former Giant, the former MVP Buster Posey even spoke out about the city. He said that players' wives are bringing up the fact that San Francisco is filled with crime and has a drug problem. He then said, whether it's fair or not, perception is reality. And all of it kind of makes sense. I mean, they haven't been able to sign superstars over the last few years, and many attribute it to the city itself. In 2023, they could have had Arson Judge, and they could have had Carlos Correa. Instead, they were a middle-of-the-pack team with middle-of-the-pack talent. Their 2022 record was 81-81, and 81, and 2023 was 79-83. and 83. The once great San Francisco Giants have now become the epitome of mid. The biggest problem that they face is of course their division rivals. After winning 100 games, the LA Dodgers went crazy. The Dodgers added the best player in baseball and the top pitcher on the market in free agency. What else did they do? Well, they went and they traded for Tyler Glasnow, they signed Teoscar Hernandez, and it does not end there. They also had the Diamondbacks in their division, who are coming off of a World Series loss. They signed a great pitcher in Eduardo Rodriguez, so I'd watch out for them again. Then you get to the Giants, again, the epitome of mid, needing to get back to their roots of spending cash and signing players. The team had talent already aboard, but they needed the big pieces to come in and become stars and fill out the rest of the team. And honestly, this master plan that we've seen from the Giants has really worked, and it's a damn good one. Not quite good enough to win the division, but it is enough to go from irrelevance to relevancy. And at this point, going back into the playoffs is all that really matters. The Giants were being linked to top free agents, left and right, right and left. It was just about time that someone would make a big splash in the water. San Francisco finally got someone, and it was a KBO superstar. Jung Hoo Lee, the man who was known for his super talented contact bat and solid defense. When he got into San Francisco, he automatically made a good first impression. <clears throat> Hello Giants, my name is Jung Hoo Lee. Lee is already a very lovable player, and that's only going to continue on the baseball field. But, you know, one unproven player was not enough to fix the team. They still had a major hole at DH, third base, and in the rotation. One year ago, they signed Mariners outfielder Mitch Hanniger, and he didn't work out, so they traded him back to Seattle. And in return, they got a 32-year-old veteran starter. That is Robbie Ray. And it wasn't too long ago that he was considered actually one of the better pitchers in the league. It's just the matter of getting healthy in 2024 and making progress. This trade made a lot of sense, and it'll show really as the season progresses. The rotation was getting there, but it was not yet complete. On January 19th, Jordan Hicks became a giant. He's pitched very well in recent years while coming out of the bullpen, but the Giants gave him a four-year deal worth 44 mil in an attempt to convert him into a starting pitcher, so it's a lot of money, and it's a lot of uncertainty as well, but I do believe that they could do it. Let's now talk about the lineup, because honestly, it really didn't look promising, with the best player being Lee, Estrada, and yeah, not much else. It lacked big-time power significantly, so the Giants decided to go and open up their wallet and go and burn cash. Their first target was going to be a DH. They offered veteran righty slugger JD Martinez a one-year $14 million deal. The Scott Boris client decided to say no and rejected the offer because he did not want to play there. After he declined, they later went on to another player, who's actually, in my opinion, and in most people's opinion, better over Martinez. And that was the former Marlin, Jorge Soler, who's actually coming off of a 36 home run year. The lineup needed homers, and that's exactly what Soler brings. The only true hole in the lineup was now third base. And, you know, the question was, what happened there, and are there options? The answer is yes, there was one very clear option, 
and in fact, the best third baseman on the free agent market, and Matt Chapman was available. Chapman would be the perfect plug-and-play player who could fill in a role, and if you remember the 2023 Giants, I mean, they were tough to watch defensively, the 30th ranked defense in baseball, the very worst, the bottom feeders. If you went and added a player like Chapman to third base, you're getting a gold glove level defender. And luckily for them, he stuck around for quite a while. And being a Scott Boris client means that you will be signing last second. And it means that you will be getting opt-outs in your contract if you are not receiving a good enough long-term deal. And that's exactly what ended up happening for Matt Chapman as they did indeed sign him. The contract was worth three years, $54 million, with two opt-outs. Again, Chapman is a defensive wizard who has won the Gold Glove Award four different times. Offensively, he's a slightly above-average hitter with a 108 OPS last season. Again, nothing special, but it works. They've been able to sign the right guys, put the right guys in the right position, and, I mean, I just love the Giants offseason. And, inside the organization, talent is still rising and on the way. Top pitching prospect Kyle Harrison is of course on the way right now. He wasn't great last year, but he was certainly good for a rookie pitcher. Six innings and zero runs against the Reds lineup? Pretty impressive. But what's even more impressive is in five innings, he gave up zero hits to the LA Dodgers. Now, give him a full season to work with next year, and let's see what he can do. At shortstop, they have another young prospect in the making, Marco Luciano. And I mean, he's not necessarily the full package. He's not perfect. But he definitely, again, has the potential to develop and be a pretty good player for the Giants. There's still even a possibility that they add externally in free agency. The 2023 Cy Young winner Blake Snell is still a free agent. He's been tied to the Giants multiple times, and he would complete their offseason. It's not very easy to go and find a 225 ERA just lying around, waiting for a contract. They already signed one Boris guy to a contract featuring opt-outs, and next up could be Snell. The report we saw was that he would be willing to take a deal that would be short-term with multiple opt-outs, and hey, the Giants just did it with Chapman, why not go and do it, put your team over the top. I'm not expecting a great season from this team overall, but I'm certainly expecting a much improved product for the fans of San Francisco. What do you guys think? If you did enjoy, please subscribe. If not, thanks for watching anyway, and peace out.